Um, so, so tell me a little bit more about peptides and bioregulators. W- what do you prefer and when do you use what? Like what are your, mm. so mitochondrial peptides, what are your favorites? Well, I mean, so the mitochondrial peptides, there's really, I'd say there's three, right? You've got MOTC, which is your exercise mimetic. You've got mm-hmm. humanin, which is your calorie restriction mimetic. And then you have SS31, which is kind of like mitochondrial biogenesis, right? It helps to make more mitochondria. And it helps to heal mitochondria. So, you know, and I I would say that, I mean, they're they're really interesting peptides, all three of them. I think the challenge with those guys, and particularly MOTC and humanin, is there's not a huge amount of human research. Yeah. Um, and and my beef with that is we don't know enough about mitochondria. So I'm I'm very cautious with them. And I know like some people use them and like have a massive response, right? Like they a very positive response. I kind of like to. I kind of like to take care of mitochondria first and then mm. bring mm. those on board maybe mm-hmm. afterwards if I'm going to bring them on board at all. But uh, the SS31 is more of a first step in my mind. Now, SS31 is very hard to get your hands on because it has now been patented as a drug by a drug company. So uh. yeah, <laughs> so so <laughs> now it's a lot harder to get. It's very expensive. And it's, you know, I think the dosing is like 20 to 40 milligrams a day. So wow. it's, it's high. So it's, it's expensive, expensive. Yeah. right? And then with MOTC and Humanin, you're now looking also very pricey and you kind of want to do like an eight, maybe four to eight week cycle with those guys. And then you got to lay off, right? And I would say that if someone uses it and, and has a Herx reaction, I think in that sense, you have mitochondria that are not ready. It's like you're, you're taking an Super. engine that's full of gunk and you're trying to rev it. Yeah. And what's going to happen? We don't really know. And maybe what you're going to end up doing is more damage, more harm than good. Right. So I'm, you know, so for me, when I use peptides, like whether it's the BPC-157, thymosin alpha-1, TB4, like those guys, to me, you're looking for a much more immediate response Mm -hmm. because they're more of like a signaling molecule. They're going to initiate cascades in the body. The, The bioregulator peptides are very different in the sense that they are purely epigenetic switches. Mm. purely mm. right okay so they're only two to four amino acids long mm. so that gives them the privilege the, the superpower if you will get of getting through. into the nucleus of the cell wow. and binding to dna and upregulating the production of proteins because this is like what i've always like struggled with you know if i take a i don't know some sort of protein whey protein steak it's got all the amino acids it's got all the ingredients that are in the bpc but the magic is how are they or- assembled Right? Yeah, it's, a, yeah. It, it's it's counterintuitive. Eh? You'd think a longer strand that makes up a mm-hmm. protein. A protein is 50 or more uh, amino acids strung together. And something like a steak would have, I don't know, 560 or something ridiculous. Yeah. And then, but these peptides and these bioregulate, the bioregulators are really tiny, like up to 10, is it? Two, uh, no, two, they're two to four amino acids. Two to four but amino they acids. are naturally occurring in food, right? Yeah. And, and they do, you do get them from food. Yeah. Right, because how does the bo- how does the body break down a protein? There are certain cleavage sites at certain sites, and so that's how things get broken down into elements. Yep. But when you're using a bioregulator supplement, you're getting think of it as getting a therapeutic dose of just that amino acid chain. Yep. Right. So, as look, I'll give you another example: thymosin alpha one. I I want to say maybe it's 19 peptides mm-hmm. or, you know, it's however many peptides in thymosin alpha one, you have two repeats of the sequence of a different immune bioregulator. Oh, right. With okay. it embedded in the thymosin alpha one. So, so yeah, so we don't okay. know, like when you give someone thymosin alpha one, does it stay whole for the whole time or does it over time get broken down? And then you get these two segment, you get these two pieces of bioregulator that are now, I think it's Villon. It's one of the other um, immune bioregulators yep. that's going to go and do its thing. So, so it's, it's, so, and bioregulators to me are really interesting also because they, do, because they come from food, they're actually being extracted from, from, from cow tissue glands and organs. If people eat organ meats, those few people out there who eat organ meats are probably getting access to bioregulators wow. Wow. in much higher degrees 
mm. than just counting on regular food. And if you look at the websites of the guys that are making these organ meat supplements, right? The heart yep, and soil, the uh, ancestral and... supplements, like yep. those guys, people, people are getting transformative health mm. events. And you think that that's actually maybe connected to the bioregulator? We get vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin, um, you get the methylated Bs in there. Like wow. you're getting a food-based multivitamin. Mm. And you're also most likely getting a bunch of these, you're getting the liver bioregulator peptides at the same time. Wow. Right. And same with things like, you know, desiccated thyroid and things like that, exactly. you know, which, you know, wow. Cause exactly. you're using the whole organ being, you know, processed into a capsule. And, and so the interesting thing about the bioregulators and, and this is even more so than the other peptides they have to me, they have a higher safety profile in the sense that you can't overdo a bioregulator. Yeah. Because the bioregulator is only going to restore homeostasis to the system. It's never going to push it into overdrive or suppress. Yep. Right. You get someone with like a wonky immune system that does too big a dose of thymosin alpha one and you know, the poop hits the fan. Like they feel awful. They have the, they feel like they have the flu, like they're feeling terrible. You can take a thyroid bioregulator and give it to a hypo or hyperthyroid person. That and modulates. And it's going to modulate their their function. I love things that are adaptogenic and modulating, and you know that things that actually go okay. What does this you know like what what does this person need, so to speak? If it could yeah. think and talk, it would say yeah, this exactly. one needs a bit more of that or a bit. So you yeah. you're saying that the bioregulators, and then the argument that you know you can't take orally bioregulators, you know they're not going to get through the gut gastric system. No, Rubbish. no. They do because that, so bioregulators being different than peptides, right? Yes. So the peptides bioregulator, it's, yeah. it's almost like, because it's, it's these that are made for us. Like the body recognizes them. And it's, again, yeah. it's about those cleavage sites. Yeah. Like when you get deep into the literature about bioregulators, they talk about, there's like very specific sections where they get chopped up, which leaves in integrity that two to four amino acid chain, which has, there are, there, I think they're called channel penetrating peptides. And so there are almost specific um, sites where they get through. So yep. it's, 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 it's actually like, this is mechanisms that are built into our physiology that we don't even really know about. Yeah. And then these come, get, go to the, the DNA, so to speak, and then actually it's like a recipe book, make this yeah. thing. Yeah, whatever like that it thing binds is. to the DNA. Like if you look at the images, there are some images in some of these books and you see this 3D structure of DNA and you see the bioregulator come in and it just wraps into the helix mm -hmm. and the helix unfolds and you start to see this production, the production oh, of, pro of, of proteins, protein. right? Wow. So the RNA that goes to the endoplasmic reticulum that does the thing. So yeah, so it, it, it's, it's like a recipe like a like a master recipe yeah and then go a, out into a, the world make this protein i mean this, I, this is epigenetics yeah this is what it is this these is are the switching genes off and on and then you have in the family of traditional peptides you have things like ghk the copper peptide yep it's only three amino acids yep. so i've had physicians who said to me i actually think that is a bioregulator it just hasn't been identified as such but uh -huh. GHK, like GHKCU, mm -hmm. we know flips over a thousand genes up and down. Like it restores the genome to a more useful gen expression. Wow. Because I mean, I use the, the GHK uh, powder and put it in my skin creams and things, but I haven't injected it. Mm -hmm. um, can you? you? You can use yeah. it as an injectable as well? Yeah, wow. absolutely. Mm -hmm. So as an injectable, it's got all kinds of other benefits, right? It helps... Uh, to break down scar tissue and it, it, re, it helps to prevent scarring. So I had a very minor surgery a few, uh, last summer yep. and I, I mean, and I was told by the surgeon, it was going to leave a major scar. I'd challenge anybody to find it if it, it's, it's wow. in a bad spot. So I'm not going to, not going to show us, <laughs> not gonna, I'm not doing <laughs> show and tell, but, um, <laughs> but I threw everything and, and, you know, the plastic surgeon said to me, you know, she tried to put me off. I had a cyst and she's like, this is going to scar. This is in a really bad spot. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You just do what you got to do. Yeah. yeah I've got that kind of thing. <laughs> and I was using topical 
copper peptide. I was using topical nitric oxide serum. I was using BPC-157 wow. topically. Wow. I used a fragment of thymosin beta-4 that is antifibrotic. Then I was injecting GHK. I was using the stem regen like by the handful. Holy shit, you're even worse than me. You're like more full out than I am. Oh yeah, no, I was doing all the things. I was like, you know, and and you know, I didn't want this thing. And sure enough, like it's you, I it, you can't, you can't see, it. see anything happening there. Wow, and because scar tissue, of course, you know, it, it it has a different substance and it really causes uh, trouble in the body. It, it pulls it out of shape, so to speak. And, and yeah, well, it know, attaches, it, it binds things. To, to, it's mobile, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. So you don't want scar tissue forming. Oh, wow. Okay. So not just, you know, I've been, yeah, the GHKCU, you know, just topically in my skin creams to, you know, keep the so skin. So topically, and off. it is great, but I yeah. would say that it, it, it is it also is very injectable. powerful and it even has cognitive benefits. Like go figure, like it's wow. just, it, GHK is one of those peptides. Like the more you research, the more stuff there is. Now, again, there, it, there's not a huge amount of human research here. Mm. But definitely topically, there's, I think there's an, you know, it's a, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your skin just, you, you know, yourself that your skin went, looks better after using that for a little while, you know? Yeah. Um, okay. So, so what are some of the other ones? So BPC-157, it's quite a famous peptide and a lot of people do have, if they've heard about anything, they've probably heard about that one. Uh, body protective compound. You can have this yeah. orally. So like with my mum had a GI bleed, um, and I, I had her uh, the, the the injectable BPC one five seven, but I didn't have the the oral, so I you know scavenged around to get the oral for her, um, because taken orally that's going to help the digestive system more than the systemic BPC injections probably. Well, this, yeah, I mean the systemic will do both. Yeah, right? the systemic will help the GI tract. It's just you end up having when you have a lot of demand. Yeah, you end up having to use more, right? The yep. the oral is at least it's getting there. It's going exactly to where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. So, it, which is part of the reason why I think taking it orally is less effective for musculoskeletal issues because it's going to get used up along the way, right? It's yep. like it'll right? go to so, where it's been sent first. And yep. how many people don't have an issue in their GI tract somewhere? How many people don't have some degree of leaky gut? Oh, we, um, yeah, that needs to be that needs to be addressed. And so, so BPC-157, like I kind of call it like the Swiss army knife of peptides, right? Because it has benefits for the brain. It has benefits for anti, it's anti-inflammatory. It is, it has pain. It can help with um, mitigating the downsides of uh, steroids, right? So it can offset, it offsets the negatives of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Like let's say somebody really needed them and says, yeah. Yeah. BPC-157 can help to mitigate the the downsides of that. Wow. Wow. Um, it's, I mean, I know I'm forgetting stuff. And, you know, is it a bioregulator? Incredibly... Like, is it, you know, because it's a tablet form, it's not considered a bioregulator even in the it's tablet too form? Big. It's yeah, too big. Yeah, it's too big. And it, and it doesn't just, like the bioregulator only binds to genes. BPC-157, I actually do believe it, it has some impact on certain genes, but most of its actions is done as a, because it attaches to receptors. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, so what's really cool sometimes when we, we think about, well, what peptides would work really well together, there's a category of peptides called growth hormone secretagogues yeah. that, yeah, yeah. that help the body to release more yep. growth hormone. Right. And yep. typically it's not going to do it in a super physiologic way. Like you're yep. not, it's not as good. powerful as using actual growth hormone, but you know, what's really interesting about BPC is that it upregulates the expression of growth hormone receptors in the body. Oh, so wow. when you're using it at the same time as the growth hormone secretagogues and you're trying to address an injury, like how cool it is it that now all of a sudden you have more growth hormone floating around and you've got more catcher's mitts hanging out waiting for growth hormone. Wow, I didn't know. So so things like CJC, epimorelin, tesamorelin, yeah. combined with BPC, which yeah, so I have my one synerg They're very synergistic when wow. you're trying to heal injury. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.